you are a scholar of religious belief or belief in general. So the fascinating question, uh, what do you think is the difference between our beliefs and objective reality? What is real, period? Sure, what is real? Easy question. <laughs> so first, let me start with belief. So belief is generally, there are different definitions of belief, just, just as there are different definitions of what is real, okay? So for belief in my field, it would be attitudes toward something that dictate our actions, okay? So we believe the sun is going to rise tomorrow, therefore we act as if it will rise tomorrow, all right? Beliefs can be wrong. For a long time, people believed, and actually some still do, that the earth was flat. Okay, well, that's obviously an erroneous belief. So beliefs can be wrong. Now, the, the bigger question that philosophers ask is, um, does, is this belief accurate toward what we consider to be objective reality? So now let me go to objective reality. So what is real? I don't think we can actually obtain a correct understanding of what is real. And in that sense, I have to refer to a philosopher again, and that would be Immanuel Kant. So Immanuel Kant is one of the, he was uh, basically in the 1750s, he wrote critiques of reason and things like that. So he's a, well, if you're a philosopher or have any kind of understanding of Western history, you know who he is. Um, he had this idea that we can actually never get to the thing in, a, in itself, okay? So and he called that the noumenal, the thing in itself. He said, this, let's take this table, for instance, that you and I are talking across. So this thing is a table. You and I both know that. We assume it's real. We believe in it because we put our water on it and then our water stays on it, okay? Um, however, can we know this thing um, in and of itself as a table? Um, so that would be what he then would call... Um, the phenomenal. How do we know that that phenomena exists as we know it is? Okay. How, how do we know? Uh, we use our faculties. So we use our senses and things like that. But again, even our senses can be wrong. So I've been on committees just recently this year, last year for hiring professors in my department who are philosophers. And every and we're hiring metaphysicians and you know people who are thinking about the nature of reality. And basically what what I've learned so from great. them, yeah, they're very I'd love weird. to attend those faculty talks <laughs> <laughs> of metaphysics professors. What's funny That's is so that great. for each one of them, I'm convinced each time. They all say different things, but they're so convincing. I'm like, yes, hire that one, right? Is it like historical philosophy like no, a particular topic? No. What do they, they do? have? No, they're they, they have an actual belief. They're practicing metaphysicians. <laughs> metaphysicians, <laughs> yes. So what they do is they come, and they're usually excellent philosophers from Harvard or you know uh, USC or whatever. You know, they come and they give what's called a job talk. That's what philosophy. Well, all, every academic does a job talk in order to get it. Um, they talk to us about a department about what they do, and so it so happens that we need a met metaphysician, and now we're hiring again for one. And so I've, le I've learned a lot about metaphysics in the last year, and this is what I've learned, um, that they use physics as a basis for understanding what we can know about what is real. And what is real is really difficult to pin down. And so your question is, what is belief? Well, belief, does it correspond to reality? That's the question I would ask. And first, we don't even know what, what is real. So the table, they would say, how do we know that the table even exists? Well, how do we differentiate it from the floor? for example. So these are the questions that philosophers are asking. No one else is, of course, but philosophers are asking these questions and they have different answers for it. So I would say that it's very difficult to know what is real. And in fact, what I do usually is I paraphrase my friend um, and colleague, Brother Guy Consolmagno. He's a Jesuit priest who's also an astronomer, and he's the director of the Vatican Observatory. And so he says this, he's a very smart person. He says, well, truth is a moving target, you know? So so basically to know what is real out there, like gravity or something like that, you've got to approximate it. And as human beings, you know, we have um, senses to tell us what, at least so we don't get hurt, you know, we're not gonna fall off a building or something like that. We have eyes to see and things like that. So we can approximate what reality is, but we're never gonna get to it um, unless we 
develop better senses, okay? And I think that that is what we are in the process of doing. We're developing better senses. We have telescopes. We have microscopes. We have, you know, extensions of ourselves, which are now called technology, and we can get to a better understanding of what reality is and what the objective world is, and therefore our beliefs can be honed. So we can get better beliefs, more accurate beliefs, but can we get beliefs that actually correspond to reality? Um, not in any precise way, but in approximate ways. 